In this video, I'll be showing you how to make these bean bags using Tunisian crochet techniques. It is a simple pattern suitable for beginners. They're fun to play with indoors or outdoors. You can learn to juggle with them as well. After you're done playing, they could be used as a pattern weight for your sewing projects. Tunisian crochet is also known as Afghan crochet. It combines knitting and crocheting which creates a fabric that is tight-knit and dense, a perfect choice for this beanbag project. What we'll be needing for this project is a pair of scissors, some yarn for crocheting. You can use any yarn you have laying around. Here we're using an Aran weight yarn. You also need a crochet hook that corresponds to the yarn you're using. Make sure it has a long enough shaft to hold the active stitches. You also need a tapestry needle or a smaller hook. This is for closing off any holes and gaps later on. Lastly, you also need a filling of your choice. We recommend you to not use any smaller seeds because they tend to sprout quickly if they get wet. You can find a written version of this guide and a downloadable PDF on our website. They come with detailed photos and instructions if you prefer it that way. First, let's create a slip knot. Wrap the yarn around your fingers like so and pull a loop through. Put your crochet hook through the loop and tighten the slip knot. There's your slip knot created. Next up, we'll be making chain stitches. Wrap the yarn over the hook and pull it through the slip knot you just made. That counts as one chain stitch. We'll be making 14 of those, or however wide you prefer your beanbag to be. You can stop to count how many chain stitches you have here we've made 14 of them. Step 3. We'll be making the forward pass on the foundation row. Put your hook through the chain stitch next to your hook, yarn over and pull through one loop. Yarn over and pull through one loop again. You'll be repeating this for the rest of the chain stitches. This is called a forward pass. It does look a bit different from the normal forward pass, which I'll be showing you later on. After repeating this until you're out of chain stitches, you should end up with 14 loops on your hook. Take some time to count just to make sure. Next stop, We'll be doing the return pass on the foundation row. Yarn over and pull through one loop. And for the rest of the stitches, we'll be yarning over and pull through two loops. Repeat the yarn over and pull through two loops for the rest of the loops on your stitch. By the end, you should be ending up with only one loop that attaches you to the crochet project. Next, we'll be doing the Tunisian simple stitch forward pass. Put your hook through the second vertical bar from the hook. Yarn over and pull through that vertical bar. You'll be repeating this with the rest of the vertical bars and ending up with 14 loops on your hook again. The last bar may be difficult to find, but as long as you're ending up with 14 loops on your hook, then you're good. So that is the first Tunisian simple stitch forward pass we've made. As for the return pass, yarn over, pull through one loop, and yarn over, pull through two loops for the rest of the stitches. Repeat this until you're left with only one loop around your hook. This forward pass and return pass creates the classic Tunisian simple stitch. 
This is where you can experiment with other types of Tunisian crochet stitches, such as the Tunisian knit stitch or the Tunisian pearl stitch. You'll be repeating this forward pass and return pass for 29 rows. And then I'll be showing you how to cast off. Here I'm showing you the fabric that this Tunisian simple stitch creates. It may curl up a little bit, which is normal. After crocheting 29 complete rows, you can count to see if that's how many you have. But it is up to you if you want to make it longer or shorter. Now, to cast off, what you have to do is to put your hook through the vertical bar like we did before for the forward pass. Yarn over, pull through that vertical bar, yarn over again and pull through two loops and you end up with only one loop on your hook. Repeat this with the rest of the vertical bars. And you should not be collecting any stitches on your hook anymore. By the time you reach the end of the row, you should have only one loop on your hook. You'll notice that the fabric we created has two different sides. You may decide which side to be shown on the outside of the bean bag. One side will be more textural while the other side will be more smooth. For my bean bag, I'll be putting the more textural side on the outside. So what you have to do is to seal it with a smooth side facing together, like so. But if you want the smooth side to be facing out, then you'll have to stitch it up with the textural side facing together, like so. Put your hook back into the loop that we were just left with. Put the hook through two layers of the fabric. Yarn over and pull through two layers of the fabric along with the loop that was originally on your hook, ending up with only one loop on your hook. Use this technique to close off two edges of the fabric, like shown in photo. Don't forget to seal the corner as well. When you're done, do a chain stitch which is yarn over and pull through the loop, like we did before, and pull it tight. This effectively creates a knot. All you have to do now is cut the yarn. To hide this loose end, put your crochet hook through the fabric, yarn over, and pull it into the bean bag. The last step in creating the bean bag shape will be folding the fabric edge like so. To seal that part, take some yarn that's about a four arms length. Thread the yarn through the tapestry needle or use a smaller size hook with a slip knot. Put the needle through two layers of the fabric and tie a little knot at the end so that the yarn doesn't slip through. Use the needle to seal off half of that edge. Now with half of the edge sealed, you'll be able to put your filling in. Do put a lot in so that the bean bag will have some weight to it when you throw it. Now all you have to do is to seal the rest of that edge like you were doing before.
As you can see, there are some small holes left from sealing that edge. To seal up these gaps, use your tapestry needle or your smaller crochet hook and thread some yarn through the gaps. And you know what to do with these loose ends. Sort it into the bean bag with your crochet hook and trim off any excess. And here is the finished bean bag. Congratulations! We hope you made yours successfully as well. Now it's time to toss them in the air and have fun with them. Thank you for following along this tutorial. Let us know in the comments if you needed any help. Thank you. Bye.